In the year 1864, with Queen Victoria reigning over the British Empire, the bustling city of Liverpool finds itself enveloped in an atmosphere of trepidation. Amidst the cobbled streets and gaslit alleys, whispers of a sinister presence take root, spreading fear among the city's inhabitants. Whispers of a vampire. Join us as we embark on a journey to unravel the chilling mystery of the Liverpool Vampire Scare. Light a candle, dim the lights, let's open the case. In 1864, the widely acclaimed vampire novel, Dracula, had yet to be penned. However, during this era, a significant portion of the UK's population were well acquainted with the concept of vampires and their associated characteristics. It is worth highlighting that during this period, the prevailing belief was that vampires came from places such as Hungary and Transylvania. Many rumours had begun to circulate that a vampire attack had occurred in the south of the city. One morning, Several women and a child, all from different households, awoke to find that they all had peculiar puncture marks upon their necks. The victims quickly alerted the authorities. However, no tangible evidence emerged and the attacks remained unsolved. Nearly all of the encounters with the vampire occurred in the Large Lane district of South Liverpool. The story begins at number 13, Lodge Lane, where 60-year-old Emma Furnival ran a small bakery. On a particularly dreary, rain-soaked day, the normality of Emma's bakery was disrupted by the arrival of an unusual visitor. An incredibly tall man entered her bakery. His thin figure was draped in tattered black clothes. He removed his black hat to reveal his bald head glistening with raindrops. Emma could not help but notice that something didn't feel right. She noted that his eyes were incredibly scary. They were sunken and his eyes dark, almost black. As he slowly approached, Emma observed that the man appeared to struggle with the English language, his speech bearing the distinct traces of an Eastern European accent. As the man inquired about purchasing a loaf of bread, Emma's anxiety shot through the roof. She had heard about the recent vampire attacks, and due to how the strange man looked, she started to become suspicious. Could this man be a vampire? He seemed to carry with him a dark, almost foreboding aura. A smile began to creep over the stranger's thin lips, his pale, almost wet looking skin folding over itself as the smile grew wider. Panic surged through Emma as she noticed the strange man was staring at her neck in a trance-like state. He stated how beautiful Emma's neck was. Without hesitation, Emma ran towards the back of the bakery, her heart pounding, her hands trembling with fear. She fumbled for the door handle and slammed it shut behind her, frantically twisting the key to lock the door. She braced herself against the door. Leave, she shouted, her voice trembling. She waited with her back pressed against the door for what seemed like hours. When she finally opened the door, the strange man was nowhere to be seen. Emma reported the incident to the police, and a few weeks later, he was seen again. A tall, shadowy figure was seen in the dead of night, prowling around the tombstones of Toxteth Park Cemetery. Lit only by the dim gas lights and the moon, the figure seemed strange, almost like a shadow moving amongst the headstones. Many people claimed to have seen the figure, and the clothes it wore matched the clothes of the stranger seen in Mrs Furnival's bakery. The police were informed and arrived at the cemetery. Cautiously, they entered the cemetery with their gas lanterns with a hope of apprehending this strange man. 
As the policeman shouted at the figure and ran towards it, the figure seemed to silently glide into the shadows cast by the lights and disappeared into thin air. There is one further alleged report stating that an attack took place inside a home around the year of 1890. Again on Lodge Lane, two sisters were asleep and awoke to find a tall, bald, skinny man dressed in tattered black clothes standing in their room. One of the sisters screamed and ran for the door. Allegedly, the vampire had bitten one of the women on the neck. As they screamed, the creature jumped from the window and ran into the dark street below. There are no further mentions of vampires in Liverpool again until after the Second World War. With the events that had taken place since the last sighting of the vampire, the attacks had been largely forgotten. In the late 1940s, rumours began to spread again about a vampire living around the Lodge Lane area. The report stated, as previously mentioned, that the vampire was incredibly tall, skinny and bald. Interestingly, one of the rumours was that the vampire's name was Manalu. Allegedly, at this time, the vampire Manalu had lived in a derelict house in the Lodge Lane area for some 40 years. Over this time, he had accumulated a following and had become the leader of a cult-like group that took part in blood-drinking rituals. During the 1980s, many stories began to develop about a vampire on the loose in Liverpool once again. In 1983, a young mother and her nine-month-old baby lived in a bedsit in Lodge Lane. The mother began to think something strange was going on in her room. It began with the feeling of being watched. At all times of the day, she felt eyes upon her, and she began to fear someone or something was indeed watching her. These feelings developed into a genuine fear when she could hear terrifying sounds emanating from the walls that carried on long into the night. These sounds and the feeling of being watched became so intense that the mother decided to go down to the police station and ask the police to investigate the room next door. Upon arrival at the police station, she told the constables about what she had been experiencing. Questioning the seriousness of her report, the officers informed her there was nothing that could be done. The mother was so afraid for her and her child's safety that upon hearing this, she broke down in front of the constables. Reluctantly, the officers decided to investigate the room next door in an effort to reassure the woman. That night, as the mother lay in bed watching the television, she heard loud banging coming from the adjacent room. She opened her window and looked down in the dark, gloomy street below and saw that a police car sat outside of the building. The police had come to search the room next door. What they discovered resulted in the mother and her child moving out immediately. The police revealed that upon entry to the room, they discovered that all the walls had been painted black and huge pentagrams and symbols adorned the walls. In the middle of the room was a wooden coffin of approximately 100 years old. It was theorised that the coffin came from the local Toxteth Park Cemetery. There was no trace of its occupant. Next to the coffin was a book, possibly a book of shadows. Next to this old book was a milk bottle that contained blood, which could possibly have been human. None of the nearby residents could recall who lived in the room and the occupant never returned for his few possessions. In June 1997, a man, whose bedsit was directly below the room mentioned earlier, awoke in the early hours one morning to see a bloodshot eye looking down upon him from a hole in the ceiling. The man shouted out, the eye moved away from the hole, and the man ran upstairs and banged the door of the room above. Nobody answered. The door behind him creaked open and an old woman informed him that the flat was empty and had been vacant for nearly 15 years. 
The last person to live in the room was a strange, reclusive man. She described him as tall, pale and foreign. She then stated that, shockingly, the man had died in the room of natural causes in 1982. The man saw the eye again in the early hours one night and moved out the very next day. Allegedly, within the same week, children playing near to Toxteth Park Cemetery reported that they had seen a tall, scary-looking man walking around the cemetery. They stated that he was completely bald, skinny, and had dark rings around his eyes, and his eyes were almost completely black. They stated that after he left the cemetery, he continuously chased a stray dog very near to the building with the painted black walls. Finally, on one summer night in 1997, a woman walking her dog came across a strange looking man. He approached her, picked up her dog and attempted to bite into it. Screaming, the woman ran away. Was the vampire just a man? In each of the eyewitness testimonies, we could find no description of fangs. It could be suggested, particularly in the earlier sightings, that the public were incredibly superstitious and questioned or even feared anything unusual or different. A tall, sickly-looking man could have indeed lived around the Lodge Lane area of Liverpool and carried out these attacks, but does that make him a vampire? Or were the attacks committed by a vampire? There are a wide number of vampire encounters that have taken place across the world. This case is interesting as each description of the creature is incredibly similar every time. And each sighting spans across more than a century. If it was just a man, how could these attacks have persisted for over 100 years? Share your theories about the Liverpool Vampire in the comments below, or vote in our poll to decide whether it was a vampire or a man at the centre of these incidents. To find our poll, click on our channel and go to the community tab to have your say. If you have enjoyed the video, please like, comment and consider subscribing, as you won't want to miss our next case.